Cast with the Lyra out of the side of Queso in our first matchup of the day. It's a little bit of a different meta compared to North America. Europe, however, is definitely making it work. They executed it absolutely flawlessly. They knew exactly the target they needed to get onto. If they can do that again, if they can go straight on to the Celeste of Salty Potatoes, they can make this work. I think the execution is a little bit harder compared to some of the different strategies that you could potentially go for. And Varia, another hero that we haven't seen too much of, definitely a lot more in Europe as opposed to North America, but definitely can be very strong and she has those Stormforged Spears to try and play at a distance and do a lot of damage from those back lines. Yeah, I'm actually really liking what Salty Potatoes are doing here. You look at their draft, they get themselves the Reza, they have the Kroll, they ban the Alpha, they ban the Taka. Those are like the big Bruiser Assassin type heroes that we see all the time. And they're basically eliminating all of them from the potential hero pools of Equinox. So uh, definitely a focused decision there from the side of Salty Potatoes. Yeah, very knowledgeable, decisive drafting. They know exactly how they want to execute their comp. Equinox, however, they are going to grab the Tony. We didn't see Tony in game one. It was banned away. They're starting to get a lot of crowd control. And now the fact that we already have a Lyra, yep. it could be a carry yeah, Tony. We've been the waiting for exactly. it. We've been wanting to see the carry Tony. Hopefully it will come out this game as well, but it's also eliminating a lot of the potential captains for the side of Salty Potatoes. They banned away the Arden, they have the Lyra, they have the Tony. I wouldn't be surprised to see them ban something like the Catherine here that a lot of teams have been going for and you know, force Salty Potatoes onto something like the Grace or you know the Adagio as the captain, something like that. Just taking away as many heroes from a single role as they can. It's difficult to do because you can draft your them so early if you want to, but once you get this deep in the draft, without picking a captain, you're able to start eliminating them and they go for the fortress. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I would love to see Salty Potatoes to go for that grace. It's gonna be something that if Celeste or Kestrel gets dived upon, she can use that divine intervention to try and keep that carry, the, their carry that they think is most vital alive. And it's gonna be a pedal coming out for the side of Equinox. Not a hero we have seen thus far. Definitely a hero that I think is viable in 5v5. Yep. And as long as they execute it, very good counter to crawl. It allows pedal to crawl, kite crawl very it's well. It's not as strong of a counter to crawl ever since the frost burn changes, but especially if pedal goes for a shiver steel, the shiver steel can be such a strong counter to that crawl. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if they do decide to try and go for that, but. Uh, Pedal, I think, as you mentioned, definitely still a very strong pick that can make an impact. Might be, you know, next update we might be seeing a little bit more Pedal with some of the changes, but it's uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what they can do with her. Yeah. So now that the picks are in, we're going to dive further into what each section will mean. We want you both <laughs> to give a player to watch this match. Fagin, we'll start with you. My player to watch is going to be Viking from Equinox. I mean, his performance yesterday, I think, absolutely warrants this because he was so strong. He took over the game and just absolutely dominated. Yeah, Joker for the side of Salty Potatoes had a pretty strong game yesterday. I think that he's capable of a lot more. He needs to make sure that he's executing on a higher level, making sure he's staying on the same page with the rest of his team at all times, but he absolutely has those fundamental mechanics to make sure that he's a dominant player. Excellent. So those are the players to watch. Let's revisit the hero picks for each player. Are there any unique matchups standing up given the selections, guys? I think the pedal is definitely one that we're going to mm -hmm. be keeping an eye on, but the carry Tony is the one that I really want to see. You know, it's very likely going to be in the top lane, probably up against, you know, something like the Kestrel. So that range matchup could end up being an issue for him. Yeah. Well, as we mentioned, both Equinox Esports and Salty Potatoes dominated their first matchups yesterday. Did you notice anything different about these team strategies today that you didn't see yesterday? I think a lot of it was the same. It, Europe came out from the get-go playing very, very aggressively. I absolutely love that from this region. I think it's a lot more entertaining to watch compared to some of the vainglory we've seen out of Europe <laughs> in the past. But yeah, if Tony can get ahead, he is going to be dealing out a massive amount of damage. Yeah, there's also a lot of mobility from both of these teams, so I expect to see that aggression continue uh, into this game because they both have very strong level one compositions. They both have very early power spikes that they're going to be looking to capitalize on. So I think the draft, very similar to what we saw yesterday. Fantastic. Well, let's see what we get. Here is Equinox Esports versus Salty Potatoes, match two.
All right, we are live on game number two for Europe, and they are going to be getting things set up. Equinox and Salty Potatoes had a little bit of salty bacon on the table just a moment ago, but it is now time for the potatoes to bring things to the rise. And Equinox is going to look to answer. Both these teams looking stellar yesterday. But only one of them can get a win here today. They just took the bacon away. I mean, I was thinking if we had another pause, that, that would be... That better be there when <laughs> we're on our break between regions, because I was looking forward to that bacon. But we'll have to wait and see, because right now there's a little bit of a skirmish going on here in the top side of the map. It's a lot of that level one damage being dished out. Clast is the target and looks like they want to maybe continue diving. Look for that gold oak. This is something I'm actually really surprised we haven't seen more of is contesting totally this gold agree. oak early because that is so much gold right off the bat. But you see Joker does secure it, and now Luga is in a world of trouble. He's going to be going down first blood secured by Clast. You know, can't believe I'm saying this, but in EU fashion, Right off the bat, we don't have to wait for action. We don't have to wait for kills. First Blood has been like under three minutes almost every single game, which is exciting, absolutely exciting. And I love the aggression. I think because a lot of teams, you know, they're taking advantage of the fact that map awareness, vision, all that's new. So you can be more aggressive. You can yep. get the surprise attack. Might as well take advantage of it. Maybe in a couple of months that will start to, you know, settle down. Teams will get better at sniffing that out. But for right now, it is just, you know, pedal to the metal. Well, the pedal is to the floor just there, but we'll be getting to see another kill come through as the Joker scares that one. Luga, Luga trying to just you know capture what he can out of the jungle and look to reset, but a great early start to this game for the side of Salty Potatoes. They were able to secure their jungle, steal away their opponent's jungle, and get the first two kills of the game. And you can see very early on already about a 1,000 gold lead for them. Again, not as impactful as a 1,000 gold lead in 3v3, but to be this early in the game and starting to build that gold lead is big. No, absolutely no question about it. Is that a flare gun on Lyra? I'm trying to see. Yes. Yeah, wow. So that's probably the first time I've seen the flare gun build first. I mean, you talk about vision prioritization. Flares in this game, very, very powerful in the sense that, you know, you could just put them down, snoop out the vision, get rid of it right away. Boom, it's done. Maybe not as strong as a scout cam, but again, for that price, you get that extra vision right out the gate. Yeah, and it's one of those situations where you just... You grab that right off the bat. It allows you to build yourself into the upgraded vision right. so quickly. Uh, we've seen, especially with someone like a Lyra, who doesn't necessarily need a Fountain of Renewal right off the bat because she has the healing available, go for that vision as your first item. And uh, that's what I would expect to see here out of Alex SS. Is, you know, try and prioritize that vision. Start putting the scout cams. Get that pool of five scout cams that you can have in right. your inventory. The vision get battle, the vision war, it is so important in the map. And I kind of like the idea about building the flare gun because if you build the upgrade scout cam, you get one extra scout cam, so that's just three. But if you build the flare gun, you get two scout cams, two flares, and those those come up much quicker. Mm -hmm. So your vision game could oh, be much Aeon. stronger. Going to get dove underneath the turret. Luga using both the Munions and his own body to soak up some of that turret damage, making sure that they survive that dive, get that kill, get a little bit of an advantage. So Equinox getting themselves on the board, and now a great rotation up to top. All four members uh, looking to go diving under this turret. Perhaps we'll see. Class looks like he's a little bit too healthy for them to really want to commit to that. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the pedal pick transition into the mid game. You see already five crystal bits, so he's gotten his first shot done and a lot of crystal. He's likely going to go just straight crystal damage. Yeah, and you look at Safantu as well with this Tony four weapon blade. So a lot yeah. of just getting as much early damage as possible. And I like that as an answer for when they fell behind. So just try and get as much damage as you can to make, get yourself back into the game and then start looking for your utility items once you've gotten things you know a little bit back on equal footing. Absolutely. Good rotations could matter huge. We see it could be a big push happening up in the top. Here on the bottom, Sneaky. Uh, we saw this with Reza plays before, and I actually really want to point out, Tasty, that you know one of the things you don't want to do is overextending your lane. That's how you get ganked. Mm -hmm. And I do like to see some of these more closer ranged or melee heroes, they aren't being aggressive in the lane. They're just waiting for the minions to push to them before they go out there and try to uh, get all the CS. And you got to be careful when you do that, that you don't let too many of those minions die to the other minions. You, try, you sometimes it's do have to go up against, but that's what the, the wave control 
is all about in the early game is, you know, you want to keep the enemy minions towards your side of the turret. You actually want them Ooh. to come towards you if you're going to be staying there. But Jiang going to get damaged pretty heavily here, trying to get to the safety of his turret, not going to be able to get far enough. And Sneaky and the Joker able to find themselves that kill. And now you see they're just going to shove this wave up as hard as they can into the turret, get some good damage on the turret, but it's also forcing Equinox to miss out on a little bit of CS. But here comes Stefanto and Alex, classed, chasing right behind them. I don't know if they really want to go for this fight underneath the turret. You see, a little bit too early for turret dives. So. Class rotated down to see if he could help them push, but yeah, you're just not going to be able to out uh, outdo the damage. It's too early. There's just too much barrier damage, and there's too, too much going against you early on. You don't have enough to take down that turret quick enough. I know they really wanted it. We do have a nice 1v1 going on between Aeon and the Varia Viking, but uh, it's going to be a stalemate. And well, right now it's a rotation up to mid, and that's not going to be a stalemate as there's a lot of damage being dished out. Ultimate coming down from Varia. Early Not going to be a doing too much, but it will dissuade Salty Potatoes from trying to commit to that fight. They didn't want to be grouped up. One shot, one kill. It's going to try and sneak onto Spontu. Doesn't quite connect, so things just kind of resetting again. Luga going up to the top, but down actually in the jungle, we do see Kroll getting caught out. Safantu able to find that kill, and they get that weapon buff back onto their side. So that's going to be really big for Sneaky's Equinox, got this. especially going onto Tony to get that weapon buff. Sneaky does take the turret, but now are they going to look for an opportunity to answer? I think this is a time where they should be rotating a, with a, a couple of members of Equinox and looking to answer. Yeah, but I don't think they are able to. Cruel had to recall back, so they're not going to be able to push up top. Mids basically stale. I mean, they're not they're not getting heavy pressure onto the mid lane. So honestly, that's Salty Potato securing a nice early turret objective without having to worry about any push coming from the other lanes. I mean, they were rotated heavy on the bottom, but there was nobody on top to follow up from the side of Salty Potatoes. Yeah, and so great job, again, like you said, by Salty Potatoes to I make mean, sure that they, uh, they don't Oh, they go for an aggressive objective push when they know that they won't be uh, answered immediately. It gives you that little advantage. You do that a couple times, and all of a sudden you find yourself with a five, six thousand oh. gold lead from Hell's Heart. Luga. Just not quite going to hit. Luga able to stay safe on this pedal, and we're going to see a couple more skirmishes here around the middle of the map, but. Thus far, I've been much more impressed with Salty Potatoes rotations than I have been with Equinox's rotations. But now we're going in. Bada bing! Knocks the Joker under the turret. We'll take one shot there. But everyone is collapsing. You already see Lyra very low. So much health on the side of Salty Potatoes. They're going to find two quick on. kills. The Joker is extremely low, but no one can get in to try and take him out. That was just, again, a a better rotation from Salty Potatoes. It was a smart decision from Equinox, but Salty Potatoes were right on their heels to answer that. Yeah, already hitting some of those ultimates early on in the game. I and mean, we're at eight minutes, so you expect to see them starting to come out. That was a great bada bing. Being able to just you know put people into awkward positions and also separate them. You're not lumped up together to be able to focus on your carries. So great job. Celeste, though, a lot of damage coming out. Building that Spellfire first. We've seen this a couple times already now in the preseason. Oh, Viking getting chunked down by the Joker from Hell's Heart. Will connect to stun. He's going to get himself the passive, and they're charging right on in, looking for the kill onto Viking. They get that one. Now are they going to look for more? Alex SS is here, but they know that there's a, at least one more member of Equinox down there, so they don't want to be committing too heavily. And again, smart decisions from Salty Potatoes, just taking what you can get, not over committing. Although now Kroll might be in a bit of a troublesome spot. He's going to end up falling here. Ended up kind of sandwiched between four members of Equinox, but Salty Potatoes, they could still look for more. They could look for a fight. They have a large damage advantage. You see the chunks being done by Aeon on the Celeste. The Arcane Passage going to disrupt things pretty heavily. Class healing up from the fountain. Able to survive one shot. Will end up tagging Alex. Nice body block, making sure his squishier and lower health allies did not eat that damage. Now here comes Sneaky, and he's going to have a lot of burst potential as well. But they don't. everyone's just sort of backing off at this point. So a little bit of a late rotation by Sneaky, but he's actually going to stick around here and hold this lane. Alex just built that Crucible. That's huge. We actually are seeing like no reflex blocks on the side of Equinox on the carries yet, which was one of the big challenges when you saw that Bad Boom come in. You know, But on, on Salty Potato's side, we're actually seeing they have of two reflex blocks or three reflex blocks. So much better prioritization of building those blocks, which are going to be very important. Equinox needs to start taking that seriously as well. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have the From Hell's Heart, you have Holy Novas and Core Collapses, and, you know, 
to a stretch even the active camos that you're going to be wanting to try and block up. So uh, a lot of big Ooh. stuns available, but this is a nice Four rotation bad. from Salty Potatoes coming down onto Equinox. And three members of Equinox are here now, but it's just not going to be enough. Jang going to get focused so heavily until he goes down. Nice Solar Storm is going to clip a couple members. They still want more kills. Alex SS very low is going to end up falling as well underneath the turret. Salty Potatoes finding themselves two kills, and now they can look for another objective such as Ghostwing. No, that's a great rotation coming right down, getting the speed buff from the river, just rushing in, getting the kill. And you saw great trying to disengage from that fight. Equinox was running as fast as they could, but it just could not outrun and outrun the pace that was coming in. A great job. So a big objective here. SF4, ugh, he was thinking about it, but he's not going to. Yeah, he wanted to try and get a steal there, but just wasn't quite able to. And uh, again, Salted Potatoes continuing to build on this lead. It hasn't been you know, a dominant performance, but they have been getting small advantages here and there. Look at the gold difference. It's about 6,000 in favor of Salty Potatoes. So again, slowly building that lead up, looking for more opportunities, looking for a team fight here in the mid lane. Lots of damage going down, but that's a great a block blocks. onto the Bright Bulwark so that the team can continue running amok. And it's going to be low health for the Krull. Krull will be the first casualty from Salty Potatoes. They do find two kills of their own. One shot is going to go wide. And there comes the Varya Ultimate to make sure that they do not continue pushing onto this turret. That's one of the great things about Varya Ultimate is it, you can use it during a fight to get the damage or after a fight just to try and dissuade your opponents. But Salty Potatoes it was a little bit mistimed on that ultimate from Varya. So Salty Potatoes were able to just regroup and yeah. take that turret down. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I do like using the ult as a dispersion to kind of push people away. But you're right. It didn't really ultimately end up the way they wanted. They still got the turret. Salty Potatoes did. So I might have, I think I would have liked it better when everyone was grouped up in that yep. fight. It was I so chaotic. It, I definitely would have liked it a little bit earlier. But uh, the Livers, yeah. the Livers passage. Oh, Luga just oh. getting annihilated there. That's again that burst coming out from Sneaky on this Reza, along with the rest of his team there being there to help. They don't even need minions for this turret. Just going to mow that one on down. Class will drop a little bit low, but again, no cause for concern because the rest of Equinox are nowhere to be found. Two of them still waiting to respawn. So it's uh, looking pretty good for Salty Potatoes here. Looking pretty good here. Uh, I do love the Kestrel from Salty Potatoes, uh, uh, Esquire. He, a lot of one shots coming in from across the map. So uh, these ultimates that you can use, these global ultimates, are great ways where you don't have to rotate down and you could still impact that fight, which I've seen he's used throughout the entire game so far this match. I've been very impressed thus far with Sneaky and his performers. This is a guy who last year was known for having, you know, two, three, maybe four heroes that he played at the top, top level. Uh, and now he's clearly added to that hero pool, playing this Reza exceptionally well, 5-0-1 on his KDA, and has been a very impactful part of a lot of these little skirmishes and getting that big burst damage down right up front and then using the nether form detonation to finish heroes off. Yeah, it's been a really strong match from Salty so far as we approach the 14, soon to be 15 minute mark. We will probably see a Black Claw in the map before this game is over. But right now, Salty Potatoes, the vision game, just look at that. They have absolute dominant control over mm -hmm. a lot of the bushes around the center of the map. And that's going to be absolutely huge. It gives them free opportunity to take a Ghost Wing here uncontested. Yeah, they know exactly where their opponents are pretty much at all times now. And they can see, okay, you know, we have free reign on this map. None of our opponents are even close to the river. So let's just grab ourselves this Ghost Wing, get that objective, get that buff. And then in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, can rotate up, look for the Black Claw. I expect to see them just trying to push down this bottom lane. It's the only tier two turret left standing for the side of Equinox. They dodge out the Tony Taunt, and so they're not going to get trapped on the turret. Bada Bing does knock away Aeon, and that's not really going to be stopping them from diving onto this turret. Aeon misses the Solar Storm, but again, they don't even need Aeon in this fight. They're still just diving two on three and finding the damage. They got the turret down. Aeon finally able to get himself back in after the Fearsome Shade, and uh, you see members of Equinox just melting under the pressure of the Heliogenesis. Looking for another turret. They're taking mid turret as well while this is all happening. So a split push uh, of sorts for the side of Salty Potatoes. 
And they grab themselves bottom turret. They grab themselves mid turret. We just saw Black Claw has landed. They're a little bit low. Not sure how much more they're going to try and stick around for at this point. But again, they have such dominant control over their presence on the map. Oh, nice one shot coming in, doing a de decent amount of damage. Able to hit that quite a while, uh, quite a bit, Esquire. This um, is looking bleaker and bleaker for Equinox. They still have all their armories, though, and I really do believe as long as you've got your armories, you've got a shot in the game. It's something that Solid Potatoes will likely have to consider either waiting for another Ghost Wing buff or going for that Black Claw, unless they can just absolutely catch out Equinox, uh, Equinox, I mean, and just, you know, find them, push through, and then finish off the game. Equinox has an opportunity here because members of such videos have not gone back in a long time, so they haven't fought up. There's a lot of gold in their pockets, but they're still just melting through Solar Storm, rips through the team, and it's three quick kills being found. Just like Ridiculous that. Ridiculous for Sneaky Viking, the last man standing. He doesn't, isn't going to be able to escape and prevent his team from losing out on possibly even the game here. The ace will come through in just a moment. Ace for Salty Potatoes. They have an armory down. They're on to the Vein Crystal. They will be picking up this victory. And this is now back-to-back -back convincing wins for Salty Potatoes. The squad is looking very, very good here in the preseason. It's still pretty early, but I am really liking what we have seen from the Potatoes. The Joker, Clast, Sneaky, Aeon, and Esquire just putting on a bit of a show here. It took a while for them to really get ramped up fully. You know, they got an early lead. They kind of just slow played it a bit. But once they started finding some objectives, they started falling very quickly.